Amna Nawaz takes a look back at that historic and deadly day. USA! 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 January 6, 2021. Trump supporters from across the country gathered in the nation's capital to protest Congress's certification of the 2020 presidential election results. To use a favorite term, we will stop the steal. At a rally near the White House, President Trump spoke to a crowd estimated in the thousands, everyone from ordinary Americans to conspiracy theorists boys. to members of right-wing extremist groups. We will never give up. We will never concede. It Trump repeated happen. the lie that the election was stolen, urging his supporters to march to the Capitol and fight. You'll never take back our country with weakness. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. Around 1 p.m., as Trump is wrapping up his remarks in the park, the day turned violent. A group of his supporters on the western side of the Capitol confront the handful of police guarding the barriers and force their way through. Moments after Mr. Trump finished his more than hour-long speech, thousands of protesters streamed from that rally site directly to the U.S. Capitol grounds. Several people told us that day they expected Vice President Pence to overturn the 2020 election results. What needs to happen today is Vice President Pence needs to not open the seven state electors' envelopes for the states that I mentioned, set them aside, and send it all back to those state legislatures. Well, we got to stop this steal from happening because um, if we don't, nobody's ever going to vote again. There's got not going to be any integrity in our voting system. Speakers, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's. Law enforcement arrived to clear a hallway above Statuary Hall, where NewsHour correspondent Lisa Desjardins was sheltered. Little police officer Eugene Goodman shuttled Republican Senator Mitt Romney of Utah to safety before running ahead to divert the approaching mob away from the Senate chamber. Rioters came within 100 feet of Vice President Mike Pence, whose security detail took him to safety from an office near the Senate. While this was hatched to do what should have been done, Remarked as crowds grew, so did the violence. Officers on site called for backup throughout the day. And while some reinforcements did arrive from local, state, and federal agencies, it took National Guard units about three hours to respond to the Capitol. Rioters outnumbering law enforcement by more than 50 to 1 attacked, dragged, and beat police officers, crushing them underfoot and spraying them with chemicals. They began to beat me with their fists and with what felt like hard metal objects. I know your pain. I know you're hurt. We had an election that was stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. Stolen from us. It was a landslide election, and everyone knows it, especially the other side. But you have to go home now. We have to have peace. Around this time, police began to secure the Capitol. <laughs> Flashbangs and tear gas were used to clear the Western Terrace. This but you have to go home now. I was electrocuted again and again and again with a taser. This is our Capitol! More than 800 people have been charged with crimes linked to January 6th. A Capitol Police officer, Brian Sicknick, suffered two strokes and died that evening. In the days and months following the attack, four police officers who were on duty died by suicide, site of presidential inaugurations. Police declared the Capitol complex secure around 8 p.m.